This is Winston also known as the Troll and Emu if you follow my Battlefield 3 videos. Today I want to talk about my stepper motor controller, which I built a couple of months ago. If you haven't seen the test video I made with my controller, driving a camera slider, you can check it out, click somewhere up here. Um, if you want to see the controller naked with just a motor, check down here somewhere. Um, I figured it, since it was highly unlikely that I would ever do a proper write-up on how I built this thing, I would just do a video walkthrough with the uh, parts and the circuits. So before I get started, let's go over some background. What is a stepper motor, and why can't we just hook it up to a battery like any other DC motor? A stepper motor has a series of electromagnets in a ring that engage sequentially to rotate a drive shaft. Since each of these magnets has to be activated in a certain order, you can't just dump power into the thing and expect it to go. You need a microcontroller to coordinate when you energize each magnet in order to achieve motion. That brings us to the Arduino, which is pretty much the cheapest, most awesome little piece of programmable silicon you can find. I use the Duomo Lenovo, which is now superseded by the Uno, to control everything. But the Arduino itself doesn't channel enough power to turn a large motor, which is why you need a motor controller circuit. People sell pre-made motor controller circuits from about $10 and up, which isn't really all that expensive in the grand scheme of things, but I was feeling super stingy when I started this project, so I decided to build my own from scratch, and that meant some research. As a mechanical turned aerospace engineering student, the prospect of shopping for integrated circuits made me feel something like this. But the great thing about the internet and the Arduino platform is that people share information all the time. There are dozens, if not hundreds, of internet forums where people talk about projects or ask for help, so I had a reasonably good idea of where I needed to start. The first thing to pick out was a dual full bridge driver, in my case the L298N. Think of this thing as a relay, a glorified bell. So a 3 volt control signal comes in from the Arduino and it dumps out up to 12 volts to the motor. The 298 will power a single 4-wire stepper motor, or two DC motors if that's what floats your boat. Looking at the schematic for the chip, you'll also need some small capacitors, diodes, and resistors. Now this video is on my Mark 1 motor controller, which uses wave drive, basically powering up one of the stepper motor's electromagnets at a time. For full rated torque, you can use a more common full step drive, where you energize two magnets at once. I didn't do this. Why? Because I was a new no one taught me this when I was in school. But in the near future, I'll be reconfiguring my motor controller for a full step drive. In the meantime, here's how my current motor controller works. First off, I tried to minimize the number of digital I.O. pins that my motor controller would occupy. Since there were four possible states for engaging one stepper motor magnet at a time, I could use two pins from the Arduino and decode them into four different outputs to the motor controller. Here you can see two wires going from pins 2 and 3 to my breadboard. I applied 2 and 3 in addition to their negated versions to a quad AND chip in yellow, and this decoded what was essentially binary into four discrete inputs to the L298 chip in blue. From there I wired the 298's output to four rows on my breadboard. Uh, this made everything a little cleaner when I wa wanted to run the outputs to a motor. It also let me drop in diodes to prevent back EMF from damaging my motor controller. I mirrored the layout on my breadboard so I could drive two motors at a time. So that pretty much covers the basics of my stepper motor controller. On the software side, I'm just writing highs and lows to the digital pins to transition from what I call states 1 through 4 in my code. In the future, I'm going to flesh out my code a little bit more and maybe write a hardware abstraction layer of sorts so I can make a time-lapse motion control engine. And yes, I know they already did this, and there's some open source API that you can use, but this is my personal educational experience. Um, I hope this walkthrough helps out at least one person who's trying to do what I did. If you have any questions, just leave me a comment below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching, and happy tinkering!